everybody, I'm feeling pretty cool today. Look at our fabulous quilt. Welcome back to Making It Fun. I am your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, but you know the real star of this show is Charisma Horton, everybody. Yay, I'm the star. Wow, right? I have such star power. And you said you were so cool. I thought you were so fabulous. Oh, You're fabulous. You're supposed to be fabulous with oh, me here. I love fabulous. Yes. And I love this fabulous quilt behind us that Charisma has designed as our eight block block of the month i guess i'm feeling a little too cool oh oh hi lights are on yeah well wow. and if you're brand new to making it fun or just joining us for the block of the month don't forget you can go back and watch all of the other videos you need to purchase the pattern from a local quilt shop one of your online retailers and you can get a variety of different kits and patterns uh, served up to you once a month all at once however you like this is what we're doing here we like to please Yes. Any way you like it. We quilt to please. That's right. I think so. I got a new shirt. I think I got a new t-shirt in the mix. <laughs> that we logo. quilt to please. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a fabulous logo. Fabulous. Fabulous. All right. Fabulous. So should we get started here, Rob? Absolutely. Now I do want to point out this is a little different than normal. Well, it is because we are creating a block, but that one block is really a section of this whole center block and you may recognize some of these pieces because we've actually done all of this before we did this in block one because if you look closely this star is very representative or the same as this star big star so um this is uh going to be a little bit different setup than what we normally have been doing we're going to work on the design wall a little bit with this month so that we can lay it out and make sure that these random hourglass blocks really stay random. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So no block to show yet, but at the end we'll have all of the blocks to show uh, so we can design them out and not get ourselves quilted into a colored corner so that we have random pieces going as we said. Right. I love it. And so this is block seven and we've named it Yvonne and I'm we're going to share a little bit more about that later but if you've been following along for the last seven months you will see or I guess six months this is seven sorry um, we have been honoring iconic quilters and people that have really established um, different things in the quilting community. And Yvonne is the name of this block for this month and we'll share a little story about that later in the episode because we really want to get to the heart of fabulous. The quilt. Yes. Squares. Squares. Isn't that weird? Odd. Like, have we ever seen a square before? Well, we've know. seen a lot of them in this project. So, no strips, just squares and only two sizes in this. You've got your pattern for your cutting instructions. We've made it as simple as possible. Right, right. I right. Mean, okay, so the first one that we are going to work on, and I'm just gonna say again, color orientation is very important in this section. You're going. To, we have a lot of units, and we don't get to the random part until the end, really. It's the last unit of the block that we're gonna make. But the first couple of units, you really do need to pay attention to the color orientation, and it's all mapped out in the pattern. So we're just going to do that really quick here. Perfect. And I'm going to, oh, and then with the two sizes of squares, just as a simple rule of thumb, on the small square that you have, you're just going to cut it on the diagonal in half once. On the big squares, to make that easy, you're going to cut on both diagonals. Oh, show me, show so me, show me. So I'm just going to do that real quick because <laughs> it's just going to make everything go a little faster for us. Yep. How easy was that? Easy. I mean, come on. So small square. One cut, big squares, two cuts. That's right. And you can go ahead and do this with all of the parts and pieces after you cut them following the instructions from Charisma. And then you have all of the parts, the shapes, and everything that you need already mapped down. And now we can really have some serious fun. So where are we starting on that, though? We're going to do the first set of um, star points, right? Is mm -hmm. that what we're working yep. on here? Yep. And Something so looks have, just like that. Yep. And we're going to pay very close attention to color placement. So for this one, we need um, blue and white. Yep. Is that what we need? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for double checking that for me. <laughs> it, and does the blue go on the right side or the left team side? Team quilting. On this one, your blue is going to go on the right okay. side. Uh, so you have four blocks where the colored square will be on the right and four where they'll be on the left. So can I press that out for you? Yes, please. You got it. 
And you can see by the size of the black triangle that we're about to add, that was one of the small squares, like the white that was cut in a single slice. Yes, and so now we're just going to lay this right on top of that um, black half square triangle to make our quarter square triangle here. All right, here we go. Perfect, thank you. I'll press this over to the dark side or the part of the fabric that doesn't have the seam in it works for both in this statement. And now we're going to work on the purple and blue, or sorry, purple and red half square triangle. This is part of the inside of the star. We create this pinwheel and you see this red and purple right here. This is what we're sewing together to create this little unit. We already have these ones finished. So I just need to make sure that I get that orientation right. And you can yep. always double check your pattern yep. too. We're good. Okay, great. Why would I make it easier on myself when I have, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Does that mean everyone has to make the quilt twice? Yes. So they have one for their example to check when they're making the second one? We would love that. Michael Miller would totally Absolutely. support that decision. That's right. Now, I enjoy chain piecing, and Charisma, I, we all know, lives for chain piecing. That's right. And one of these things on a lot of these blocks, you can chain piece, but one of the tricks I learned, and I've really used it in this particular month, was I always like to construct one block first, so I know, or one unit, I should say, first, so I really know what I'm doing, and then I feel very comfortable to chain piece, and I can use that as my visual representation as well. That's right, because... You don't want to turn something wrong, right? We discussed that. Yeah, and if you turn them all wrong and then you chain piece them all, you have a lot more unsewing to do. A lot more of that frog stitch that not yes. everybody loves. So we just double check. Yep, we got it. Golden. Only those four, but in this exact orientation, in this exact color combinations. That's right. Right? Yep, it forms that pinwheel in the center that we see. Fantastic, so now what's next? Oh my gosh, we get to start building the units, right? Oh no, we still have one more. That's right, the it's, randoms. Yes, the <laughs> randoms. Let me get these out of your way for you. So the randoms are the best part, right Rob? Mm-hmm. Because we can just cut all of those half square triangles, well, quarter square triangles, I should say. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just sew pairs for now because we have one more unit that is the setting units that you'll see in the corner. So you have a half, a white half square triangle that pairs up with two. And then all of those halves that you have left over are going to create these four real hourglass blocks. So this is the fun part where we really get to chain piece. I like the rule of never using the same four colors in, or you know, the same color twice in the four here. Yeah. Any tricks to going random? You throw them all like in a grocery sack and pull them out two at a time or anything well, like I that? Well, I do that a lot because I am like one of those people that I am not, um, I don't care if my pink and red touch and I don't right. care if my purple and my blue touch. I'm like pretty easy going about that sort of thing. So I think we have enough to kind of get us started here. So we'll take our small white square that we cut in half earlier and we're going to have Rob press these, I forgot my part, <laughs> and then we're going to sew those together like we did with the black and white or the black squares earlier today. And as I'm getting ready to press these, because some of these we're going to be using in combos and some of these we're using as solids, we do want all of our seams going in one direction. So I always like, you know, I love my camping, so I often use the concept of a tent when I'm looking at two triangles. So as my eyes read this as a tent, I'm pressing all of my squares, or excuse me, my two triangles over onto the left side so that they all have a random. <laughs> I should say they all have an organized and they form that wonderful seam on the back like that, omitting some bulk for us all. Okay, now that I have those two white half square triangles done, I am going to just 
sew some of the randoms together so we can demonstrate that. Except for we just got quilted into what? a corner. You were going so quickly, I didn't have time. We need one more stitch. All right. Because even though we said random, this personally, the, the two of us are just that sensitive about color. We don't really want to use that because we have the same fabric featured twice. So I quickly replaced the coffee she normally drinks with my Folgers crystals today. That one's yours. Looking fabulous over there. Yep, we're gonna do a full hourglass block here. Okay, got it. So you need me to press those. Yep. And now you've got four different colors in your hourglass. Yes. I'm so much happier. And as we were saying, as Christmas getting to sew that, the ones that have the white on half here, these units themselves were all random choices. And with the white, you'll need a dozen or 12 of those. All right, here we go. Fantastic. So now we have a random hourglass block and you probably want to trim this. I do. It was just like itching. I was... Of course. Just couldn't help myself. May as well catch those while we're there because at this point now we can go over to the design wall and get prepped out because we're going to build the entire center star for you all so that you can see the important piece placement and the random piece placement. And again, the reason we're building it all at once is so that all of these random units can really look random and you can really have fun with your colors. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to the design wall and I'm gonna lay this out just so that we can make sure that everything stays random, fabulously random. So here we go. I'm just gonna start building out from the center and I'm going to Go ahead and my goal is to make that pinwheel, right? So we'll know that we've done everything correctly if we build that pinwheel in the center. So here we go. And look at that. I think Rob and I are doing a fabulous job. So there we have that. Now we're going to go to those units with the quarter square triangles where we've used the black and these are the ones where we really had to pay attention to the orientation because those are the points on this side. So we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> I'm going to pull the red and the orange out because that's what's on top of our original star up there. And I know that the yellow and green are on this side. So I'm going to do that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Look at how that's coming together. Okay, and I know on the bottom I have blue and aqua. And so we know that we've done all that when those half squares come together and now we have purple and pink and look at how that star just comes together we are fabulous okay so now we're going to start using those half square triangle the white ones because those were the random ones right so now we're going to start building with the colors and I don't know I'm not a big fan of that right there because that's not a planned thing so I'm just gonna take that down and I'm just gonna choose another one because we're fabulously random and I can put that one over here and if I need to rearrange those later I can totally do that but now you can start to see my square come together or maybe not Now you can start to see my square come together. And I know this probably takes a little bit longer than normal, but how many times do we lay something on the design wall and we just sort of ponder it? We step back, we look at it, 
because we just want to make sure that everything lines up. And look at, I have a lot of purple right here. I think I'm just going to go ahead and switch these two right here because that just makes me feel better. And then look at that. We've built that out. We know that we have this square on point that kind of lines up here. And so now we just get to start throwing these random blocks up and we've built it out. I just think this is so, you got it, fabulous. Nope, not so fabulous. Nope, I can do that. Okay, so now we have this out and then now you can just kind of step away Look at it, see if everything's right. Do we need to change a few things? Do we need to maybe move some of that green out of the top corner because there's a lot there? Yep, I feel better about that. Okay, so what do you think, Rob? Fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, so now we're gonna start sewing that together. Had to get back for the action, of course. That's right. Now, are you going to sew them all the way across the rows that I can hand them to you? Or are you just going to do like one square at a time? How can I help? Well, we can do one square at a time because okay. that's how the pattern is laid out. So let's just go ahead and do that. That'll be easier so to do sections. This is your next? Yep. Here, here. Yep, absolutely. We just want to make sure that we keep their the controlled colors where they're supposed to be. And I love to always go back to my, my design board or table, double check, make sure everything's as it's supposed to be, and then hand it over to my buddy there. <laughs> and I sure like the way the sewing is going for me. You notice I really don't have much threads on my shirt in these videos because I've done really very little work. I've stuffed a whole dog bed. <laughs> and Winston is very happy about that. Okay, so this is, oh, it's three by three now. So I'm gonna press this yep. and let me hand you these next two. And this is the seam. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I have my own personal. Personal presser? Yeah. <laughs> I guess quilters don't hire like chauffeurs and gardeners. No. We, we hire personal pressers. Pressers, cutters, yeah. and quilters. Well, I guess that's just for fabulous quilters. Right, right. Yeah. So, okay. So I have this one. I need the one more that's on top. Okay. Of and if I had lost my orientation, I could just rotate, right? Did yep. I get that right? Because that yep. white fills that in. Exactly. And then now you know that's your seam. Okay. Perfect. your seam, the two whites. All right. And as always, I'm over here pressing the squares and the rows so that the seams will nest inside, outside, and all of that. I'm going to return this to the wall to make sure I have it going correctly. And then baby, I better check because I don't want to hand it to you wrong now. Does that look right from back there? Yep, absolutely. Okay, fabulous. That's your seam. And that's your seam. We're now going to put the rows together. What? Gonna... Yeah, it's going quick. Although I might have sabotaged one of your seams over there. Don't tell everybody. Okay. <laughs> What stays in the, what happens in the studio stays in the studio. Right, exactly. Okay, 
Oh my gosh. What do we have going on here? I think we are all there, but there, we got one last one to put on. And I'm just going to double check because we have all those random pieces out there. That does look right, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. See that quarter star? I see the yep. line. Yep. It's all working out. Wonderful. We'll go ahead and just finish this block. We'll show you the reveal. We'll put all of our blocks together and be back at block or month eight as a full finishing video with all of the parts and pieces. So we want to show you again from the beginning, we will start back at the center next month. Whew, I just had to concentrate on that. Right. <laughs> all right. Okay. Time to press it. Impressive? It's impressive. Wow. That's so fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> awesome. There you are. Oh my gosh. It just sparkles. It's just so glittery and glam. And who is our iconic quilter for this month? Oh, do I get to tell the story this you time? You get to tell the oh, story. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so our heritage, iconic, fabulous, inspirational quilter to go with block number seven, we named the block Yvonne, is for Yvonne Porcella. Now, I have not had the honor of meeting Yvonne, uh, but we know she is iconic and fantastic. Uh, and of course, the reason I'm excited about Yvonne is she was, if I understand correctly, the founding member of SAQWA. That is the Studio Arts Quilts Association, S-A-Q-A. -A. And really, that's the movement that really helped get art, or the quilts into the art world. So, excuse me, quilts off of the bed and up onto the wall where I prefer them. Well, and she's really pivotal in color placement, right? Of Something course. about color. And so color, charisma, it's just kind of this thing. And on top of that, she's Alex approved. Alex right? approved, that's if right. If you've been watching since episode one, which we absolutely hope you've been doing, then you will know that Alex Anderson approved this list <laughs> and she was really at one of the top of Alex's people of iconic quilters. Yeah, and uh, and and it's really fun. And so again, you can check out Alex. She's got a lot of these heritage uh, or legends shows on the Quilt Show and uh, with Ricky Timms. Um, but the one thing that was really important uh, that we conveyed was, in Alex's opinion, Yvonne was the one who changed the color palette in quilting also. And so yes. that's really exciting. And again, we don't always get the opportunity to rub shoulders with all of these fantastic folks, but it doesn't mean we're not completely inspired by what they've done for us all out there. So Yvonne Porcella. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Absolutely fabulous. Although, I think there's one other fabulous person we should be talking about. Yes, and that is Charisma. Yes. Charisma from Charisma's Corner. That's where you can find me. All of my patterns and designs are listed there, and there's new ones all of the time. But, of course, we would like you to focus on fabulous. Awesome. And we will see you all for block number eight. We will be back together to help you put your blocks together to make this fabulous quilt. Fabulous. fabulous. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.